So let's go through and have a look at our pad footings. So what we have is we have a column. Column sits onto a base plate. Base plate, we have a bit of grout underneath it that sits onto a pad footing. We have an axial load and star running down our columns. All right, so all the pad footing is to do is to distribute this load or spread the load out over a wider area. So this stops our ground failing due to punching shear from the load on the column. So we have some bearing capacity of the soil pushing back onto our pad. This is our QF. What we're trying to do is design this pad footing here. So the Rio down the bottom and we have to size it. So I'm going to go through um, the calculations or just an overview of the calx, and you guys are going to have to go through and do it. So I'm going to be referring to the AS3600, looking at section 15 for our plain concrete pedestals and footings. This will refer back to section 9 as well. So looking at our calx, all right, pad footings. So what we need to do, um, obviously, we start off with some material properties. So if I look at my material properties, um, here we go, properties, props. Um, I have my F-C, so in our case, I think we're looking at 32 MPA, probably looking at my FSY, my yield strain of my steel to be 500 MPA. Um, I'm probably looking at my gamma, my weight of concrete to be, so conch, uh, 24, 24.5 or 25 um, kilonewtons per meter cubed, because we have to account for the self weight of the pad as well. And I'm going to take a QF, the bearing of the soil, to be 300 kPa. All right, so they're my original ones, or my properties to start off with. So let's have a look at how we determine our surface area. So let's assume that N star is equal to, uh, let's take, say, 500 kilonewtons. So we've calculated our axial load to be from all loads or contributing loads to this column. So simply the area of my pad footing is equal to N star divided by my bearing capacity of my soil which equals 500 kilonewtons divided by 300 kPa which equals uh, 1.67 meters squared there's my area now if I'm assuming it is a square pad footing the length of each side is equal to the square root of a which is equal to obviously square root of 1.67, which is roughly 1.3 meters. So my pad footing is 1.3 by 1.3. Uh, we'll come through and we have to assume a depth because I need to get my weight of my pad footing. I need the self weight. So let's assume my depth is equal to, uh, let's go with 400 millimeters. So therefore, my self weight is equal to 0 0.4 times the unit weight of concrete, 24, which is equal to 9.6 kPa. I'm going to get this to a point where I'm going to design a meter strip of footing. So I've got some self weight here. So now what I can do is I can check my bearing again. So now what I need to do, checking my area, A is equal to 500, which is my axial load plus my self weight of concrete, because that's now going to act as well, all divided by my bearing capacity. What we end up with is 
about 1.7 meters squared. Come back through this, L is equal to square root of A. For L is still roughly equal to 1.3 meters. So that's going to be okay. So therefore, my footing, or my pad footing, the size of it is going to be 1.3 by 1.3 by 0 0.4. So what I can see is my pad footing will be something like this. Square footing, 1.3 meters. 1.3 meters. I have a column in the middle here and I have a base plate sitting on top of it. So that's what I need to look at. So I have a column sitting somewhere in here and then I have a base plate sitting over it. I'm going to take this column here as a 250 UC for the example which means if I have a 250 UC, my base plate dimensions uh, in meters will be 0.38 meters or 380 mil. If you want to check it, you can go back through um, the AS4100 and you can design that base plate there to spread the load out. Or for a 250 UC, just take these and it will be okay. All right, so now that we've done that, what I'll go through is our next set of calcs. So we'll come back over here. So what I have is I have this situation, all right, where, let's just fix this one then. Cool. So my N star is equal to 500 kilonewtons, self out of this. This depth here, 0.4 meters, assuming the 400. All right, so now what I have as well is a W star that I have to calculate. So this W star is a bending moment that acts due to my QF down here. It's gonna apply a moment on this pad. So how do I work that out? Well, the W star is equal to my bearing capacity of the soil, what's pushing up, subtract the self weight, which what's pushing down, times by 1.3 meters. As we can see, we sized before, it's a 1.3 meter wide footing. So you come through, you work out your W star. Now, what we need to do as well is I need to work out my lever arm for this force. I'll do it in blue here. My lever arm is from the corner or the edge of the column to this point here, our A. Edge of the column to the edge of the footing. So my lever arm for this case is equal to the 1.3, so the width of the footing, divided by 2, gets me to the middle. Subtract the column width, so 250 column, divided by two, gets me to the edge. Now the M star, you can now calculate your moment. You've got W, you've got L, you know this formula. You can come through and calculate the moment acting on this from the soil capacity. All right, so calculate that. Then what we're gonna do is we'll come through and we're going to look um, into this section. So we're gonna come down, we're going to look at our strength in shear. So for our shear capacity, so for our shear design, this time here, we're looking at 15 point 4.3 So let's have a look Looking at the standard So designing our strength in shear 
So if I'm looking at A or looking at B, so where the member acts essentially as a one-way member and shear failure can occur across the width of the rectangular cross section, um, B of the member, design strength and shear shall be taken as this one here. All right, so where we've got the, so looking at B now, where the shear failure can occur locally around the support or loaded area, the strength shall be taken as this one here. So this formula, all right, where VU is this, U is the effective length of the shear perimeter, referring back to section nine. A is the uh, dimension of the critical shear perimeter, cool. And B is a ratio given by this clause here. So for a pad footing, local crushing can occur, which means local failure or shear failure can occur under the loaded area, which is where the column is. So we'll be looking at part B for this. So what do we know? Well, if I'm looking at my, back up here to my pad, I have these here I need to look at. Firstly, we can work out our minimum cover. All right, look at clause 4.2. 10.3 I think so we need to find our cover which is based on our f-c and that's looking at 4.10.3 now for shear design a couple of things I'm unsure of here that I need to calculate so let's have a look at this figure here 9.2.1a Somewhere in here. Here we go, 9.2.1a. So we're looking for our shear perimeter. So what we're after is obviously this entire perimeter. So this block here is looking at our base plate and then we have our shear perimeter sitting past it, which is DOM divided by two. All right, so you'll need to go through and find out how the hell you calculate DOM. So good place to start off with is to work out what DOM is. So as always, if we look at the start of our standards, if I look for my technical definitions, be in the notations, DOM is the mean value of DO, it's the averaged around the critical um, the shear perimeter. So you need to go through and work out what DO is, the average value. So you can go through, what's DO? Well, it's the distance between this to that, going through this formula. All right, so DO should be familiar to you um, based on other concrete design that we have done. All right, coming back to section 15. It's probably a bit higher. There we go. Cool. So you need to go through, you need to work out DOM. That's your goal. After that, you need to calculate your A. You're also going to need to calculate your U where A is our dimension of the critical shear perimeter, which is parallel to the direction of bending being considered. Looking at this figure, U is the effective length of the shear perimeter. Looking at this one, which we've just gone through. So I draw a little diagram over here that might help. So I have a, this one, this one in here. So this outer line here, this is my base plate, which you have the dimensions for. This here is my shear perimeter. I think that's how you spell it. I hope that's how you spell it. If not, it'd be interesting. This here is my D O M on two. All right, so go through, calculate this one. A is going to be simply equal to um, my plate 
plus DOM or two times DOM getting the overall and U is going to be equal to uh, sorry by the way around Nathan U is going to be equal to four times my plate plus DOM getting the overall distance and A will be equal to my um, plate plus two DOM or DOM on two. So maybe I'll leave that for you guys to calculate to make your life a bit more difficult. But you can go through these two figures which will get you these. Now BH, alright, so BH, if we go through the clause, let's have a look, 9.2.1.5, uh, The ratio of the longest overall dimension of the affected load area to the overall dimension x perpendicular to the y, referring back to this figure. Basically, square footing, so this here is going to become 1. Okay, so once you've done this, you can do this design. So calculate all of them based on those figures. Once you've calculated them, come back through, enter them into this formula here. You can work out your shear capacity. So that shear capacity of the beam needs to be less than our shear that's acting on it. So our shear that acts on this is N star. N star acts as V star over our pad footing. So it goes transfers from an axial load in the column to a shear load in our pad. So do your shear design. Once you've done your shear design, what you need to do is go through our bending. So now we look at our bending design. Or we look at our pad footing in flexural. Yeah, so our flexural capacity or our bending capacity. So our M star, we've already found this before. We found our M star, uh, where did we find it? Back over here. All right, so we know what our M star is. We know what moment we are resisting. We know our modulus of steel, 200 GPA. We know FSY, our yield strain of steel is 500 MPA. Alright, so now what you're able to do is you're designing this pad footing for a one meter strip. You need to make sure that phi muo is greater than m star. So capacity is greater than the moment acting on it. Now what you might need to do is because we haven't looked at the Rio yet and the size of them. So what you're probably going to do is assume some type of Rio, say N12, at maybe a hundred centers. And you can now come through and calculate your M star based on this. Check if it's greater. All right, and keep iterating this process back and forth. Make sure obviously that this needs to be more and you can optimize our Rio after that for a meter length. Once you've done that, what you're able to do is you can produce some type of drawing. So a plan view and a section view. So you might have Rio here. You can dimension all of that and you'll have column, base plate. We might have Rio spanning in some type of direction and then there's a high chance this will be okay if you have to get away with it in one but 
doubtful, we might need to do it in two. So have Rio in both directions. So go through, calculate them, and any troubles we can go through and have a look. Thank you.